Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our church online. This is Kurt Newton Church Building, and we're surrounded by this beautiful place, which has now become an orchard. You can see these apple and pear and cherry trees, and it's looking great. So let's come together and worship as Kurt Newton and East Calder Parish Church Online. We gather as those who worship the one true God who is without weakness, who is beyond criticism, who is honourable and fair, who is just and merciful, who is not the outcome of human choice or raised to power by partisan nomination. She is God, creator of heaven and earth, present at the beginning and who will be present at the end. He is God, who favours no one person over another, who cares for all with a depth of emotion unrivalled. Come, let us worship not human power, celebrity or wealth, but let us worship the one who deserves all we have to offer. Before the gods I will sing your praise. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. Let us pray. Strong and steadfast are you, O Lord, ruler over all creation, Every human being is created in your image, bound to you in love and called to serve. From the dust you raise us and place us in communities, each with gifts and graces meant for sharing. Forgive us, Lord, for we can be stubborn. We can be selfish, greedy and unloving. Forgive us 
when fear overwhelms us and drives us into poor decisions. Forgive us when doubts seep into us and cause us to question your way. Lord, help us to face our fear and doubts, to bring them to you and seek your guidance. Give us courage to follow in your way, strength to make the right choices. Help us to lead each other in your way today and always, as we give ourselves to you in worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 138. Hear the word of the Lord. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfil his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the words of your hands. Here ends the first reading. Amen. Disturb 
those peaceful years to plowshares men shall be their swords to pruning hooks their spears no longer hosts and countering hosts shall proud of sin deplore they hang the trumpet in the hall and study second reading can be found in the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 3, reading from verse 20. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not able to eat. When the family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth. All the sins and blasphemes of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, He has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. She sits like a bird Brooding on the waters, hopping on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs as she sings, mother in creation, waiting to give birth to all the word will say. She wings over earth. Resting where she wishes, lighting close at hand or soaring through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming each wonder, nourishing potential hidden to her eyes. 
she dances in fire, startling her spectators, waking tongues of ecstasy where dumbness reigned. She wins and inspires all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured in story strange. She is the Spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Saviour in eternal love. And she is the key, open in the Scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly dark. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for your word. Inspire us and change us. By your spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. There isn't much in the Gospels about Jesus' relationship with his family. But what seems to be clear about this encounter in Mark 3, which Robert read earlier, is that it appears that Jesus has been at least unsupported by his family in this incident. They even thought that he was out of his mind. The Greek word there could be translated as they thought he was mad, to which Jesus widens the definition of who his family is to include all who seek to do the will of God. His family didn't get him, nor did the teachers of the law who accused him of being evil, in line with the prince of demons himself. What a terrible accusation to make. I wonder, is that what Jesus means by the unforgivable sin of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? That by accusing Jesus of being in league with the devil, the teachers of the law were in turn slandering the Spirit of God as evil. We can't say for sure about this. Commentators can't pin this one down exactly. Surely, as Jesus says in the words before that, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. That that means what he says. Yet he goes on to say that whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Perhaps he simply means that such a sin would indeed be eternal until, it seems a contradiction in terms, until it was confessed by the sinner. For we know that God is faithful to forgive sins. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But let's look at how Jesus responds to his family's lack of support and the accusations of evil by the teachers of the law. He responds not by cowering away in a corner or disappearing or running away from his accusers, but by speaking up for himself confidently, his confidence placed firmly in the confidence of God and with the knowledge that he was already a part of a sisterhood, a brotherhood joined together by faith in God. Despite his troubles he didn't lose heart but fixed his eyes on what was yet unseen, the future glory ahead. As Paul points out in the second letter to the Corinthians. We look not what that can be seen, but what that cannot be seen. For what we can, what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
Paul in that chapter helps us to see that troubles in this life are expected but that they are what he calls a momentary affliction which actually help prepare us for a glorious future. Part of our daily renewal of our inner nature is how he describes it. I believe that Jesus teaches and embodies such an inner change in consciousness as he keeps his eyes on God, on grace, on love. That's the challenge, isn't it? Is to keep our eyes on God, on grace, on love, despite our momentary troubles. This approach to faith understands that nothing is static. The universe unfolds, our understanding of God evolves, develops, deepens, and our moral development evolves and changes as well. And often it's times of disruption that are significant doorways into whatever's next. Stephanie Spellers, a leading thinker on change and growth in the church, said recently that the current challenges of church and society are a way of God cracking open people for a greater possibility. I wonder, am I willing to be cracked open for a greater possibility? Paul speaks of us having this treasure in jars of clay and we know that the light from within is often only seen if there are cracks in the jar or holes in the jar. The writer Alan Roxburgh suggests that the Holy Spirit has been nudging and calling Christians to embrace a new imagination. But the other one had to unravel for us to see it for what it was. In this sense, the malaise of our churches, he says, has been the work of God. And the theologian Richard Rohr says that a church that has been humbled by disruption and decline may be a less arrogant and presumptuous church. It may have fewer illusions about its own power and centrality. It may become curious. It may be less willing to ally with the empires and powers that have so long defined it. It may finally admit how much it needs the true power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's a church that God can work with, he says. So as we go on in this time of disruption for everyone, might we see these afflictions as momentary and keep our eyes focused on God, on grace, on love, taking our lead from Jesus and our power from the same Holy Spirit who was in him and who is in us by faith. For it is as we hold fast to God's divine will day by day, moment by moment, that we will experience the inner transformation that we need, our society needs, and our whole world needs. And as we are transfigured from the inside out, God invites us to play our unique and essential part in the coming of the glorious and eternal kingdom. So are we ready to allow God to crack us open and to shine our lights through his spirit? May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. <music>
Eternal God, for you so loved the world that you sent your one and only Son, that we might have life in him. So we come before you in worship, bathed in your love and freely given grace. We offer these tokens of time, talent and money as a sign of our continuing commitment to your church, our community and the mission that we carry out in your name. Take these gifts, Lord, and use them for the good of your ever-coming and ever-present kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we give thanks that the COVID-19 vaccination programme is progressing well, and that progress has been made to return to some normality. We give thanks that we have managed to open our churches for public worship during May, Whilst the ongoing restrictions make the services different, it is great to actually gather together. Dear God, we pray to pray for ourselves. We dare to pray for ourselves. Above all else, we give thanks that our church without walls has thrived over the past year, and we ask that you continue to bless us, guide us, and walk with us in everything we do. Bless everybody, both within our fellowship and within the wider parish, especially those who have a particular need and challenge at this time. Help us all to be aware of those around us who need support and equip us to do what we are able to do to help. Father, we remember especially our Minister Alistair. <clears throat> we thank you for his renewed strength and energy and we pray that you will continue to help him make a full recovery. Dear God, we thank you for all your goodness to us by virtue of living in the United Kingdom. Overall, we are privileged, but there are huge inequalities in our society. No child should be hungry. Nobody should have to live in vermin-infested accommodation. Nobody should be homeless. Father, as we come out of COVID restrictions, help our politicians to take the opportunities to prioritise better so that some of these inequalities can start to be addressed and help us to try to influence these decisions. There are also huge equality inequalities across our planet. Most of the reasons for this lie with mankind. You have given us a free choice, but do we exercise it as you would wish? There is widespread misuse of power and political corruption. Fair trade is a myth to many poorer nations. Many nations do not yet have access to COVID vaccines. Mankind as a whole seems intent on destroying the natural world. Help us to be a voice of peace and reason and to speak out against oppression and inequality. Be with world leaders and give them the will to put aside selfish national agendas so that differences and inequalities can be resolved peacefully together. All these prayers for our country, the world, and for Kurt Newton and East Calder, we offer through and in the name of the risen, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay.
God trusts us to be loving. God trusts us to be responsible. God trusts us to learn from our mistakes. We go in the blessing of God. Lord of all, you who turned power on its head, who showed us that true power was found in vulnerability, guide us and guard us. May we find our security in you. May we trust and not be afraid. And even when we are, may we know your presence with us always. Bless us on our way this day and every day. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen.